In today's Living Word, we pick it up with Bildad speaking to Job in Job chapter 25, beginning at verse 4. He says, How then can a man be righteous before God? Or how can he be pure who is born of a woman? Even If even the moon does not shine and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less man who is a maggot and a son of man who is a worm? Well, <clears throat> No need to sugarcoat it, Bildad. It is as David stated in, 50, in the 51st Psalm, we are sinners from conception on. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Psalm 51, verse 5. Since sin separates us from God, indeed, how can we be pure before God? Has God made provision for the cleansing of an infant? The cute little baby who is referred here uh, as a referred to here as a maggot. <laughs> By the way, remind me to cross Uncle Bildad off of uh, good old Uncle Downer off of the invite list for the first birthday party. Okay. Anyway, yeah, the answer is yes. God has made provision, and it always starts with faith. But one might ask, all right, how can an infant have saving faith? How can an infant experience regeneration? How can an infant be born again? And that's a very legitimate question. Psalm 22, 9 is instructive here because it says, For you are he who took me out of the womb, causing me to trust, have faith, when I was on my mother's breasts as an infant. Now that doesn't sound like someone toddling down an aisle in an arena to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. An infant obviously can't express faith in that matter. It's faith that always comes first, and this God-given faith is the same faith that moves the feet down the aisle at a revival meeting. It comes first. It's a simple affirmation of what God has already done in your heart, that trip down the aisle. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 reminds us, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And one of, one of the ways that this saving faith comes to us, one of the means of grace, if you will, and this includes infants, is through the act of water baptism. Baptism is a major part of the new covenant made possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus as it states in Titus 3, 4, and 5. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared in Jesus Christ, the new covenant, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. The kindness of God expressed in the new covenant, born again, regenerated, renewed, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is good for children as well, as it states in Acts 2.39. For this promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. <laughs> yeah, Bildad, we came out of the womb as unrighteous maggots. But after we emerged from the waters of the God-blessed gift of baptism, coupled with his gift of faith, we, like Abraham, walk before him blameless. But remember this, because this is so vital. Baptism must be coupled with faith. Mark 16, 16 says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Simply stated, he who lacks faith will be condemned, baptized or not. I'm Dwayne Matz. And that's today's Living Word.